the only thing he changed was, what do you think on the valuation? And he's, you know, he's done 190 plus deals now. So, the sweet spot for estate agent sourcing is not when it's on right move. I honestly, honestly have never looked for a house in my life on right move. We've done 37 million quid worth of property. I almost couldn't tell you how to do that because by the time it's hit right move, it's way too late. <coughs> the sweet spot is the moment they get the property, you nodding, the moment they get the property in before they've listed it. So what does that mean? That means that hopefully non-competitive conversation about how many phone calls are you making. You need to get it before it is published. That's all. And of course with the estate agent, if you go in, buy it, they don't need to do any work with anyone else. They just go and sell the next property. So it's the sweet spot before it comes in, before it's published, which is why you have to do all the work and take all the responsibility for the sourcing. Oh, and how did I finance it? Did you think I put a penny into that? No, not a single dime. Delish. So is that a scalable model? If you can employ someone else to do all the sourcing and you can work with private investors to do all the funding, how many properties can you buy? Infinite. Isn't that beautiful? As long as you get it right. And we do 45 pieces of research for each property. In fact, with that exact same investor, I'm currently buying a set of only six flats at 695 worth 1.2 million with a 40 grand refurb. It's not bad. How much do you think I'm putting in that deal? Nothing. Um, he's getting some interest, but I'm not putting anything in. Isn't that nice? We worked together for years now. Where did I meet him? Bristol Pin. Thank you, Simon Zutzi. So grab your business cards. Okay, 100% loan from the first guy with some charges on some of my other properties. So it's not the, you know, it's not the first deal you're going to do with somebody. And the refurb money I borrowed from other people and put an RX1 a restriction on it so that I couldn't you know, run away with the money. Not that I ever would, but... So isn't that nice? And where did I meet them? Bristol Pin. So, ran a fundraising campaign, 28 coffees, 14 weeks, job done. Raised 600,000 quid. It's really that simple. Was I this confident about it? No. Although I'm very sporting, I'm quite conscious of my diet usually. Um, how much Nutella do you think I ate? Seriously. How clean was my house? How many cups of tea did I boil? Because I sat there, it was only me. I sat there at my kitchen table. I jumped out of, you know, corporate job. And it was just me in the house. And do you think the most exciting thing in my life was to pick up the phone in a terribly English way and say, oh, hello, can I borrow some money? It was the worst thing in the world to do. So I'd, I, would like, I would like phone one investor, reward myself with a spoonful of Nutella. Phone an investor, reward myself with a spoonful of Nutella. You, you know, girls got to get it somewhere. You know, get some chocolate in the room. You know, do something to make you move forward. And when you are uncomfortable, remember I was horribly uncomfortable about this. It's just that my requirement to look after my family was stronger than my English embarrassment to ask for money. That's all. So find whatever's going to trigger you or reward yourself with chocolate, like I did. So I had the fear and I had the pleasure and it seemed to work. So do something to reward yourself and tell yourself what a shit position you're going to be in if you don't make this move forward. Do you want to hear it? It's exactly what you guys did. I haven't done it for a while, so I might, it might, I would, I had a brochure because I wanted to stand out. These, by the way, are our online packs. Um, so I'd go, hello, my name is Susanna Cole. I make money with my funds and other people's funds. A good example is, bought for 85,000, refurb 7,000, revalued at 130. If you want to make money on deals like that, come and speak to me. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do. Terrified. What deal number was that that I did? Two. Is there any excuse for you guys not to raise money? That was my second deal ever. So if people lent me 600 grand after two deals, they will definitely work with you if you're trustworthy, honest, transparent, and can share everything about yourself so they can make a proper decision. So why do they do it? We're going to skip over this generally. They make money. You secure the money for them. Um, but actually, the interesting thing about millionaires who have made their money they either bought it, done a management buyout and sold the company again or built the company and then sold it and there's a lot of those guys around and I bet you there's a couple in this room right now is and they're probably sitting with four, five, six million quid and they will show you their spreadsheets and you will sit and converse with them and you'll say well we'll do business with 20% of that revenue because they're going to divide their thing up anyway is that they're bored like why do I work? I don't need to work 
I work because I am loving it. I was kicking Tiff's Tiff, um, girl from Ghana in my videos, like, you know, Miss, Miss Posey one, who's like a be beautiful girl in my videos and does a lot of the refabs for us. I have so much fun working with that girl and I was kicking her ass and going, Tiff, you've done one joint venture, brilliant. You've made 17 grand, brilliant. Where's your next three JV partners? I get more pleasure out of that. So I'm a good example of it as well. He was bored. I was fun. So there are going to be other motivators why multimillionaires who used to be in huge demand, didn't they? They ran companies, they were needed, they had meaning, and they suddenly step out of their business. Where's my community? So if I'm going to work with this buzzy property investor, I'm regaining some of my fun and love of the business. And that's one of the main reasons they do this stuff. Yeah, it's true though. And I'm a white, I'm a white, I'm actually from Scotland, but I'm a white freckly Scottish girl. He is Asian from an entirely different, you know, religious background, but we've got a huge amount of common ground. We've got kids the same age, huge values of the same being family, and we both love business. So we, you know, we still work together now, it's great. So those people are around, and you're gonna offer them other things other than money, although you need to offer them money, and they are gonna offer you other things other than money, which is their business brain, which is amazing. So there's so many other benefits to these private investor relationships, which is beyond the pure cash. We've talked about that, so let's go through. And here's our sourcing numbers. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I've told you about my numbers, and I've gone phone up, you know, get phoning. This is the ratio I want you to look at. So we were talking, weren't we, in the, in the break, about numbers and about how many properties you're viewing versus how many you're offering on. This is, this is what I look at with Ash. I, I, I don't even know how many hours Ash works because I, I don't need to. We've worked together for almost five years. The guy is a grafter, nonstop. But if he's viewing properties, I need to know that he's offering on a minimum of 85% of what he views. Otherwise, he's being inefficient in his sourcing and he's just going out for a jolly. Uh, not that Ash ever would, but do you know what I mean? It's an ineffective waste of time. You need to make sure that your desk research delivers you stuff you can offer on. So that is your critical ratio. I want you to be offering on 85% of what you view. If not, you need to scratch your head and figure out what's wrong with your actual desk research. So, you need to be fast on deal analysis. I won't go into it in too much detail. And without being... Uh, do you know that we do online packs? And we're, we're learning how to do online educate. Who's bought our pack so far? Can you shout? I mean, I don't mind if you, what do you think? <laughs> Thank you. Say again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't no BS for me. Useful? Yes. Good. I want you, so we're charging like 20, 25 and 30 quid at the moment. It's far too low, but we're learning <laughs> online, just like some of you guys are learning property. So I grabbed them now because they will definitely go up while we learn. Um, I've done a deal sourcing pack, I've done a buy sell, uh, a raise and private finance pack and a buy to sell pack at the moment. Business pack is coming out and so some other ones. So go online or to our website and have a look. But there we talk about deal analysis in more detail. I want you to offer professionally. What does that mean? I want you to offer with proof of funds. Don't worry if you haven't got proof of funds, we're turning that off, we'll tell you how to do it. And I want you to offer with your lawyer's details. Why? Because I want you to stand out. So in our last weekend, we met my proof of funds person, didn't we? So I didn't have any money when I started. I was 60 grand and I spent that so fast on two deals and then I was out of money. Ooh. So I had to raise some money, right? So what did I do? I kept offering while I was raising money. It was all very sweaty. And I had a friend called John who actually came to our mentoring program because I talked to my mentees about John and here he turned up. I won't say his second name because, and I met him through Simon Zuzzi. John has, or had, 180 grand in his bank. John never once lent me any money, but John, on a weekly basis, lent me his screen grab of his bank account. Isn't that nice? I bet you there's enough people in here who would just genuinely, out of total decency, lend you a screen grab. Now I never tell lies, ever, God forbid. But I would write to the estate agent with proof of funds, thank you, John, very nice of you, once again, here's 180 grand, here's my lawyers, and I would say, here's proof of one of my investor's funds. I'm not telling a lie. <coughs> You want to split some hairs? My hairs are still on the right side of the truth. But I was able to evidence credibility. And what does that matter? Because they're not going to test you on the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth deal because they're going to go to people like us who are tried and tested. Deal six, when they come into the Monday morning meet and what on God's earth are they going to be talking about? Shall we sell some houses? We've got anything else to talk about in this team meet? Oh, 
here's a girl who looks interesting. She has repeatedly given us her proof of funds and she's very consistent. She writes professional letters. Shall we try her out? Yes. You're breaking through. They're going to try you out and they're going to put you on the developer list. So you can offer with someone else's proof of funds. As long as, personally, I think you never tell any lies. Here is some of my investors' funds. Don't mean to say he's going to give you them. John never gave me a penny. But, you know. And be efficient. That 85% offer to viewing is really important. So hopefully I've given you some information around raising private finance, which is mathematically based. Can you tell my dad was a maths professor before he retired at age 52? Power, power of compound interest, says dad. Um, but we didn't come from a wealthy family. I mean, my dad's dad died. He was a plasterer. And my dad's mum, I adored, but she had four kids to bring up. And she worked in a sweetie factory. And I think my dad had a football once for his Christmas, and that was it. You know, So this does not come from major wealth. We talked about raising private finance, and I want to do a little bit about buy to sell so that I can kind of go, right, here are the three key topics. Can you find them? Can you buy them? And can you make money from them? I'm also going to show you my cookie cutter for my HMOs so you can make money from buy to sell or buy to keep. Best though, cake. Um, I'm just doing the review at the moment of 2015 for the team because we always do like a, a day of review. Um, I'm kind of surprised how many cakes <laughs> happened this year.